Have you ever wondered why you are the only one in your family with your grandfather's eye or your grandmother's nose? This can all be explained through genetics. Genetics seeks to explain how characteristics of living organisms are passed on from parents to offsprings. However, genetics does not fully explain all of the characteristics that we observe. This is because our environment plays a very important role in the development of an organism. Let us now take a brief look at the history of genetics. From the time of immemorial, people were aware that characteristics of parents were passed on to their offspring. But without much scientific method being used, various assumptions were made. Genetics can trace its history over 5000 years ago when the ancient Egyptians began breeding date palm trees. Aristotle proposed that male sperm contain imperfect ingredients, and this imperfect ingredients can be organized by menstrual fluids during sexual intercourse. This belief was held by many for many centuries. After observing sperms under a microscope in the 17th century, Lewin Hoke proposed that there were little humans that were present in sperm, and these were referred to as homunculus. Over the next century, it was determined that both of the genders contributed equally to inheritance. This then led to the curiosity as to what happened to the genetic material after fertilization would have occurred. Blending was used by botanists to explain the inheritance of characteristics. This means that some of the characteristics were contributed from each of the sex, which led to a new characteristic being formed. However, in the 1800s, Gregor Mendel performed a series of carefully manipulated experiments using pea plants to show how characteristics are inherited. It was until the mid 20th century that the genetic material that is responsible for inheritance was truly discovered. It was a substance called DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Gregor Mendel was born in the year 1822 in now what is called Eastern Czech Republic. He was actually the son of a farmer and his mother's father was also a gardener. This was certainly an asset to him because he would have been exposed to breeding techniques. In 1845, he joined the Augustinian monastery as a teacher, but was later sent to the University of Vienna to further his education. There he learned the scientific method, which was well established at that time. He also took courses in biology and chemistry, which led the foundation for his work that he completed a few years later. He returned to the monastery and from 1856 to 1863, he conducted carefully manipulated experiments to determine how characteristics were inherited in pea plants. In 1865, he gave a public lecture based on his findings and one year later he published his findings. Unfortunately, the journal in which he published his work in was not well read among scientists during that time and his work therefore did not gain much attention until 1901 when three independent botanists had corresponding findings as Mendel's work. Some of Gregor Mendel's findings that we would discuss in this course are as follows. Genetic determinants are particulate. That means that they are not lost after fertilization occurs. Each individual plant has two copies of the determinant and these are referred to as genes and genes of a particular characteristic can exist in two different forms. This is what we refer to as allele. It should be noted that Gregor Mendel was not a university professor, nor was he part of any prestigious research institute. He was simply a monk and a teacher whose laboratory lacked scientific instruments. He worked alone on a small plot of land on the monastery, yet his work revolutionized the field of genetics, and he is even considered as the father of genetics.